Hey everybody, this is the Mage of Ancients and I'm very excited to give you guys the debut of my Sekka's Burning Abyss deck profile. This is a deck that I've been working on and playing with for the past several months and I'm enjoying it so much. As you guys probably know by now, Burning Abyss has seen quite the resurgence this past year. Burning Abyss variant decks took first place in both Montreal regionals this year. And if that weren't enough, this guy named Thomas Rose was actually able to win the World Championship Qualifier in Europe this year with his own Burning Abyss build. And he was also able to make top 32 this past weekend in the 200th YCS in Europe. This may not be as competitive as Thomas's uh, Burning Abyss deck or Danger Burning Abyss, but I thought for a long time as to which cards I want to include in the main deck, the extra deck, as well as the side deck to uh, make this deck as competitive as I can. So that's why I'm very excited to give you guys this deck profile. This is a competitive Burning Abyss deck profile, at least for me. If you guys have any suggestions on what I should do to improve it, then feel free to leave those suggestions down in the comments below and let's share those thoughts with everybody. With that being said, let's get started with my take on the Sega's Burning Abyss deck. So to start off with the monsters, of course I run the Mallow Branch of the Burning Abyss monsters. For those of you guys who don't know, most Mallow Branch monsters have effects that you can trigger when they are sent to the graveyard. I mean, if they are sent to the graveyard. So to start off, of course, three copies of Skarn. This is your searcher. Um, what this does is that you can search for any level three dark fiend uh, in the end phase of the turn in which Skarm is sent to the graveyard. Once per turn, of course. And after that, three copies of Farfa. This targets any monster on the field and banishes it until the next turn. And two copies of Libic. This is my personal favorite because maybe you have a, a Burning Abyss monster in your hand, for example, that you just want to get out onto your field. Libic lets you special summon uh, a level 3 Dark Fiend from your hand onto the field with its effects negated. And then of course, Graph lets you special summon from your deck. Seer lets you special summon a Burning Abyss monster from your graveyard. And then after that, Rubik. It doesn't have any, uh, it doesn't have any uh, graveyard effects, it's just there because it's a tuner. Alec lets you target a face-up monster on the field and negate its effects until the end of, of the turn. Calcab lets you bounce a set spell or trap. And Barbar lets you uh, banish any number of Burning Abyss, actually up to three Burning Abyss cards from your graveyard and deal to your opponent uh, 300 points of damage for each. So these are the Burning Abyss monsters that I have in my main deck. I would like to include um, Dry Cake, but the thing is I, I don't see any reason why to. Uh, there's also one called Kagna. I don't know which, uh, which one does what. Either way, these are the Burning Abyss cards that I run in my main deck. And I think this is the right uh, right ratios and these are the right cards to run. And now for my supporting monsters. Standard in pretty much every other Burning Abyss deck, of course I run three Fiendish Rhino Warriors. If this card uh, protects your Fiend monsters from getting destroyed by battle or by card effects. So every Malabranch monster in the main deck has the effect where if you control any other monster that is not a Burning Abyss monster, then it's destroyed by its own effect. But Fiendish Rhino stops that from happening, so that's the reason why it's standard to pretty much every Burning Abyss deck. It also has that extra effect where if it's sent to the graveyard, then you can send one other Fiend monster from your deck to the graveyard. Then afterwards, this is a card that I have not seen um, players use, whether you're, they're playing Burning Abyss or not. But this is a card that I've decided to use, and that card is Mathematician, and I run three copies of that. Mathematician lets me send any level 4 or lower monster from my deck to my graveyard. And I would usually send Edge of Sabers, and I run two copies of that. So the standard combo that I would go with is that I would normal summon Mathematician, send Edge of Sabers from my deck to my graveyard, and then send it to my graveyard that I can use its effect to put any card from my hand onto the top of my deck and then special summon it, and then I can go into a Dante and then mill that card from there. And the other graveyard active cards that I use are two copies of Pero Pero Cerberus, if you take damage from either battle or by an opponent's card effect, then you can banish this card from your graveyard and then target and destroy any card on the field. I also run Necro Garna. This basically uh, negates uh, your opponent's next attack by banishing it. And Fairy Tale Snow. This is a card that I never expected to use uh, before I started watching other Burning Abyss deck profiles. This is a really good card. After you use those, after you have a lot of cards in your graveyard that you don't really need, that you can banish those cards and then special summon your Fairy Tale Snow and then disrupt your opponent's place. Then after that, of course, I run my one copy of Tour Guide from the Underworld, as well as one copy of Crane Crane. Both of these monsters special summon monsters with their effects negated. Tour Guide special summons a level 3 fiend from your deck with its effects negated, while Crane Crane special summons 
any level 3 monster from your graveyard with its effects negated. As you guys could probably tell by now, I am not running Rescue Cat or Gallus the Star Beast. Those two are really good cards. What you can do is that you can use Gallus' effect to reveal it in your hand and then mill the top card of your deck and then special summon it. At least that's what I remember. Rescue Cat is basically an extender for Gallus the Star Beast, so you can normal summon it, and then afterwards you can special summon two Gallus the Star Beast from, straight from your deck, and then you can overlay for a Dante. I don't have Rescue Cat or Gallus the Star Beast mainly because I can't afford it, but if you guys want to run those cards in your own Burning Abyss deck, then by all means, go ahead and do that. Then after that, I can't believe I'm actually saying this, but I'm just super glad that I finally got uh, my hands on these cards. I run three copies of Ash Blossom. <laughs> I'll, I'll, glo I'll gloat about that card just a little bit later, but let me just get to the rest of my cards in my main deck. So afterwards, I run three copies of Effect Veiler, then two copies of Envoy the Beginning, then one Orbital Hydrolander, and for the last three cards of my main deck, I run three copies of Secus Light. It is a Secus deck, so the only spells that you run in your deck are um, Secus Light, and you run no traps at all. But let me get back to Ash Blossom. Ash Blossom is one of the best hand traps that Konami has ever made. <laughs> um, convince me otherwise. Anyway, Ash Blossom actually has fallen out of favor for a lot of people, mainly because Go Geese and Sky Strikers are still pretty much the most dominant decks in today's format. And just using Ash Blossom against one effect, it just isn't enough because uh, Goki players are still going to be able to uh, recur those resources and just still create that um, nightmare lock. But still, Ash Blossom is a level 3 monster, so you can still overlay into Dante if uh, you need to. And you can also summon it off of Crane Crane if you just happen to have an Ash Blossom in your graveyard. Also, while it may not be as good as Droll and Lockbird, for example, you can still use Ash Blossom to uh, just find that one effect that can make or break an opponent's deck and just negate that effect with Ash Blossom. Same thing goes for Effect Veiler. It may not be as competitive or as good as everybody else may think, but... The fact that um, Nightmare Goblin is um, now banned, um, according to the most recent ban list, it just gives us another incentive by which we can use Effect Veiler to target co-linked monsters. Envoy the Beginning is also a good card. If you have a bunch of monsters in your graveyard, if you have a light and dark monster in your graveyard, you can banish those two and then special summon uh, your Envoy and then just continue your place from there. Hydrolander works pretty differently because you can only special summon it if you have uh, five or more monsters in your graveyard with different names. And it has that uh, destruction effect that doesn't target, it just destroys any card on the field. You have to mill three cards, however, you can only uh, resolve that effect if you have at least two monsters, but those monsters have different names, otherwise the effect won't resolve. Sekka's Light is basically a pot of greed for a modern Yu-Gi-Oh. You can, if you have no uh, spell or traps in your graveyard, you can um, activate it and draw two cards, and you can also banish that card, banish this card in the same turn, and return any monster from your hand back into your deck, and then draw another card. Now for my extra deck. Of course, you guys can run any cards that you want in your extra deck, but this is the extra deck that I am going with. So, I run three copies of Dante Traveler of the Burning Abyss, of course. Those are the two gold rares, and this is the one uh, secret rare that I have. But either way. This is your. This is the Burning Abyss's main powerhouse. Um, yeah. So what you do is that you can mill three cards. Uh, although the really cool thing about um, Dante Traveler the Burning Abyss's mill effect is that's not really effect. It's actually a cost. If your opponent tries to negate its effect um, of being able to uh, gain uh, attack power off of uh, the cards that you mill, you'll still be able to trigger any graveyard effects if you uh, want to. And then right afterwards, of course, one copy of Beatrice Lady of the Eternal. You can Xyz summon this card using Dante as your Xyz material and by discarding one Burning Abyss um, monster from your uh, hand. For my other Xyz monsters, I run one number 75, Bamboozling, Bamboozling Gossip Shadow. <laughs> Sorry about that. This is, came from Relentless Revenge. But this is basically um, a card. This is actually a level, rank 3 um, Xyz monster variant of, I think it's Artifact Duradol. So what you could do is that if your opponent tries to activate a monster effect, then you can detach these two materials and the activated effect becomes both players draw one card. So it's a good way to divert your opponent from um, uh, his or her place. But you guys can opt this out for anything else that you want. And I also have one copy of the Phantom Knights of Breaksword uh, for a spot removal. You can uh, destroy one card that you control as well as an op a card that your opponent controls. And Super Quantum Mech Beast uh, Grand Pulse is in here mainly for uh, spell or trap removal. 
And now for the other extra deck monsters. The only synchro that I run in this extra deck is Virgil Rockstar the Burning Abyss. This is what you summon off of uh, Rubik. And I also have uh, Dante Pilgrim of the Burning Abyss. If your Beatrice is destroyed by your opponent's monster by battle or by card effect, then this is probably one of the monsters that you would want to go into off of uh, Beatrice's effect. The only Link monsters that I run in this extra deck are Nightmare Mermaid, along with Cerberus, two copies of Phoenix, and one other Clock Taker, and finally one Trigate Wizard. This is uh, so I can create some kind of uh, mini Nightmare Lock. If you guys want to go ahead and try and create that extra link by using other link monsters, you can definitely go ahead and do that. Uh, but I do want to uh, make my extra deck as flexible as possible. That's why you see uh, number 75 and you also see uh, Mech Beast Grand Pulse and as well as Break Sword. And yeah, this is the extra deck that I am going with. But you guys can adjust this into uh, any way that you would like. And now for the first time in a while, I'm including my side deck. Of course, you guys can include whatever cards that you want in your, ex in your own side deck, uh, but this is the side deck that I'm going with, as well as the cards that I'm going with. But yeah, enough talking. Three copies of Ghost Reaper and Winter Cherries. Three copies of DD Crow. One card destruction, now limited on the most recent ban list. Three copies of Twin Twisters. Two copies of Called by the Grave. And last but not least, the Cherry's Targets, one I sold, as well as Sky Striker is Kagari, and finally, one Nightmare Mermaid. So that's 3, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 15 cards. 50 cards on my side deck. Ghost Reaper, in my opinion, is still a pretty good card to include, especially if you're going against any of the meta decks, or maybe some of those rogue decks like Paleozoic or uh, Heroes. So what you would do is that you would discard this card and then reveal any card in your extra deck, any monster in your extra deck really, and then what you can do is that you can um, force your opponent to banish any copies uh, of that monster from their own extra deck. So that's why I included these extra deck monsters. I sold uh, when I'm going up against um, heroes or gokis or any other warrior based deck. Sky Striker is Kagari of course against Sky Strikers, and Nightmare Mermaid just so I can prevent myself from getting um, extra linked. But you guys can make this into any other nightmare monster that you uh, think is necessary. DD Crow, um, not many people are playing this uh, um, hand trap right now, but it's still a pretty good card. What you can do is that you can discard it and you can tar target a card in your opponent's graveyard and then banish it. Maybe your opponent is trying to force an Ibli on you from uh, his or her graveyard onto your field. So that way you can only special summon link monsters. You can drop your DD Crow on them and then you can target that Ibli and then banish it. Card destruction, like I said, is limited on the most recent ban list. And this is actually a card that I decided to include last minute just because uh, it creates some kind of an advantage as well as disruption for your opponent. Um, you could switch this out for another Cherry's target if you want to. Twin Twisters is in here uh, when you're going up against any um, any deck that uses back row like Sky Strikers. Call by the Grave. I don't know why this got semi-limited, but it's good against not just hand traps but pretty much any against any other card that you just want to get out of your opponent's graveyard as i said you guys can include any cards that you want in your side deck this is just the uh, side deck that i decided to build um, when i'm going against the competitive meta so that's it for this deck profile everybody thank you all so much for watching if you guys enjoyed this video and you want to help support the channel then be sure to hit that like button Comment below with what other Yu-Gi-Oh! videos you guys would like to see, such as deck profiles with a new format, weekly vlogs and discussions, and combo videos. And of course, be sure to leave a solemn strike on that like button and hit the notification bell so you would be the first to know when I upload brand new Yu-Gi-Oh! videos. Thanks for tuning in, everybody, and I will see you next time.